Imagine you could pick up any book, read it, and remember almost everything from it. This capability sounds like a bit of a pipe dream, but there were actually some people in the real world that seem to have this superpower. If I were to show you a non-fiction book that you have read over the past year, how likely you are to be able to remember key points and facts from that book. So if you're anything like me, you have read a lot of books, but you have probably forgotten the vast majority of the stuff that you have read and probably haven't yet applied them to your life in the way that you'd liked. So in this video, I'm going to share more than five steps that can help us to remember more and also a framework for applying our knowledge. So the first step is highlighting the book as you read, but not with one color. I suggest using at least three colors. One for the actionable takeaways, another one for your favorite quotes, and the third one is just other parts of the book that are neither actionable steps nor quotes. For example, something you have found useful, interesting, or inspiring. But just using some colors is not useful. The thing that I highly suggest to you is to write the theme of each highlight, especially for the actionable steps. For example, if you you have highlighted a text which is an actionable step about business, you can label it as business in the periphery of the book. Or if the text is about the unconscious mind and also business, you can write both labels. So the general idea is to write the theme of each highlight if possible as well. And this is going to be very useful, especially in the long run. For example, maybe three years later, you need the good information you have read over these years about business, family, relationships, and so on. So as a matter of fact, these themes act like a filter. Step number three is creating a one-page book review. The first thing in this quick review is the book score. I myself have a four-point rating system for rating different books. They are positive two, positive one, negative one, and negative two. Positive two means the book is really awesome. Positive Positive one means the book is not awesome, but it is good and informative. Negative one means the book is not good, but I don't regret reading it. And negative two means the book is bad and I regret reading it. Here are some examples in order to get a better idea of my rating system. After rating the book, I try to explain the general theme of the book in a few sentences. For example, this one page review is for the compound effect by Darren Hardy. And I suggest writing your book review on the first page of your book or in Notion, Google Docs, Google Sheets, and these sorts of things. Step number four is to write or record a summary of the book. After finishing the book, you can go back to your highlights and start summarizing the general ideas of the book. I myself prefer recording my voice explaining very briefly the general ideas of each chapter. But if you prefer, you can write them down. The best advantage of recording your voice is that you can listen to those audio files in your dead time. And by doing so, you can at least review one book every day. Generally speaking, for me, these summaries will be about 10 to 15 minutes. And I usually double the speed while listening which would take five to seven minutes for reviewing each book. Step number five is the toolbox of success. One of the problems which I'm sure all of us have experienced is that we have read a lot of books but probably haven't yet applied them to our life in the way that we would like. As Jim Rohn points out, it doesn't matter if you read all personal development books that come to the marketplace or attend every seminar that comes to your town if you don't apply them. For this problem, I suggest creating a kind of tracker which I call a toolbox of success. The idea is very simple. When you come across an actionable step, write it down on that tracker page or pages. For example, I have an entire collection in my bullet journal for this toolbox, which by the time of recording has two pages. And then from time to time, try to refer to this tracker and see which ones you are applying and which ones you are not applying. I highly suggest you track this in your bullet journal. In my opinion, one of the best tools which can help you to track your progress, habits, daily tasks, and your productivity is bullet journal. And you can learn how to set up your minimalist bullet journal by watching this video which is on the screen now. By the way, I would really appreciate it if you tap the like button. It really helps the channel with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.